I've been saying for years that you can build a website, you can produce a podcast, but if you don't have the listeners or the viewers, the visitors, then what's the point? Welcome to the We Are Slam Show, where you'll learn marketing agency insights, best practices, and ideas to help your business grow. Today, we're going to talk about the three types of traffic and how to use them to drive results for your business. Now, of course, you hear a lot about content. You hear a lot about social media, a lot about digital marketing. But what is it that holds all these things together? It's traffic. You know, I've been saying for years that you can build a website, you can produce a podcast, but if you don't have the listeners or the viewers, the visitors, then what's the point? You know, there's billions of pieces of content uploaded to the web daily. The internet is already full. And unlike in the movies, if you build it, they will come. This just doesn't happen in the world of digital and internet marketing. You know, you can spend a lot of time building something only to discover that the traffic, the interest, the the eyeballs just aren't there. And so it's a failed effort. And so in this show, I want to talk about the three types of traffic because at the end of the day, it's really about, you know, when you build something to get the people there to see it. Now, we talk all the time about understanding your customers. And I always say your customers. You don't need to know my customers. You don't need to know your competitors' customers. You need to understand your customers. Because once you truly understand your customers, you're going to have this foundational knowledge of not only where they are, but at what point in the buyer's journey they are as well. This is critical information because this information is going to allow, is going to give you what you need to go out there and draw them into your offer. Okay. If you don't know where they are, then you can't, you don't know where to start when it comes to traffic. And today's show is all about traffic, the three types of traffic. So the first is traffic that you buy. The second is traffic that you control. And the third is traffic that you own. And I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail for each of these and show you how you can get the best bang for your buck and where to invest your time, energy, and money. The first and most obvious type of traffic is traffic that you buy. Now, as a marketing director, I'm sure that you are familiar with this idea of buying traffic, buying media. And what this means is that you have an offer and that you wanna get eyeballs on that offer. Now, disclaimer here, generally, if your offer's not working, it's not the eyeball problem. You know, a lot of times if an offer is just not producing at the level that you expect it to produce at, then it's like, well, I just need to get more eyeballs on this offer. But that's generally not the case. If your offer's not producing, then there's a problem with your offer not with the amount of people who are seeing it. So that's a side note. But when we talk about traffic that you buy, it's about going out, purchasing ads, purchasing traffic, and doing this with dollars, okay? And then directing that traffic back to your offer. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is where are some of the best places to buy traffic? Where are some of the best places to place my ads? And this all comes back to who is your customer and where are they on the internet or offline? Where are they? If you know where they are, then you know where to find them. If you don't know where they are, then I would venture to say that you don't actually know your customer. And so you need to take a step back before you spend any money in advertising. You need to take a step back and get to know your customer. And when I say get to know your customer, I don't just mean, you know, get to know their psychographics or their, you know, their pain points, these types of things. What I mean is, where are they and where can you find them? Get to know where they are and where you can find them. This will allow you to make intelligent decisions when it comes to placing media, when it comes to buying advertising. Now, if you understand where your customers are and you have an offer that you know captivates and attracts those types of people into your funnel, then at that point, you can put money into buying traffic, okay? Because you know where they are and you know you have an offer that works. So buy that traffic, double down on that traffic, get the analytics, make sure that you're able to track it from point A to point B and understand, you know, when I spend a dollar, I'm gonna earn a dollar fifty, or when I spend $5, I'm gonna earn $10. If that's the case, 
then you can spend all day. If you don't know the answers to these questions, then you need to begin as you buy traffic to begin tracking, to begin taking notes, to begin to, you know, create trends and, and baselines and figure out, you know, where is my break even point and how much do I need to spend to make, you know, a profit? How much do I need to spend to make two times that spend? Whatever the case may be, these are the questions that you need to be able to answer. Now, the disadvantage to buying traffic is that you're going to have to continue to buy traffic in order to continue to produce the results that you're used to producing. But you can't buy traffic forever. I guess maybe you can buy traffic forever, especially if it's profitable. But ideally, as you build out a more sustainable, long-term, repeatable process, you're able to do so without always needing to buy traffic. In fact, wouldn't it be nice to have some traffic, you know, kind of in a bag back here that you can kind of just pull out from time to time. And it's a lot, a lot less than, you know, going to the market and buying traffic. Well, that's what we call traffic that you control. And, you know, the last few years, this traffic that you control really has come about in the way of social media. Whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, these are places where you have a following and that following is a, you know, that's traffic. That's, those are people that are ideally are your target customers or customers and you're able to, you know, do a post on Facebook and grab their attention, right? This is the ideal. Now, a lot of you spend a lot of time, money, and energy into building your social media following so that, you know, you could put a post out there and you could, you know, bring people into your offer. But here's the thing. What have we seen? All that time, energy, and money that went into building that Facebook following, into building, you know, these audiences, what has happened? You can no longer access them for free. The organic reach has deteriorated. And a matter of fact, you know, we could post uh, a post on Facebook and if we're not putting some, you know, a little bit of money behind it, there aren't very many people that are going to see it. And the, the fact is, you know what, that's, that's Facebook's decision, not ours, regardless of how much time, money and energy we put into that network. At the end of the day, the network is owned by Facebook. The traffic is owned by Facebook. You know, every, every profile, every person that follows you, that's not your traffic. And you can't just expect to put a post up and have those people see it because now Facebook is like, if you want these people to see it because, you know, quote unquote, you know, there's so much noise here. There's so much going on that we really have to pay attention to what we're showing, you know, our users. And, you know, we just don't think that your content as a business is relevant to their day-to-day lives. At that point, it doesn't matter how much you put into it, Facebook's like, no. However, if you want to, you can pay to show your ad, your offer, your post to your fans, okay? And we've had this terminology of my fans, our fans, your fans for many years now, but just keep in mind that it's Facebook's fans. These are Facebook users, and I don't care if you have 10,000 or 10 million at this point in time, it's going to cost you money to access those fans, to access those followers. And what that means is that, you know, this might have been traffic that you controlled at one point, but now it's traffic that you're going to have to buy again. Now, Twitter following, same thing. LinkedIn, same thing. You know, these are different places where traditionally... These are different places where, you know, previously this was traffic that you controlled. It's traffic that you had access to. Now it's traffic that you have to buy. So the idea here with traffic that you control is that you don't own it and that in at any point, regardless of how much time, money and energy you've put into developing that audience at any point, that traffic, because you don't own it, can be taken away from you. It can, you know, they can shut down your Facebook page. They can, you know, shut down your YouTube channel. Whatever the case is, you don't own this traffic. And so the third type of traffic, which I've alluded to, the best kind of traffic is traffic that you own. Now, the internet marketing gurus since the beginning of the internet have been saying that you have to develop a list. You have to build a list, okay? And a lot of times when we hear this word list, we're like, uh, email lists? Like, we have to collect emails? Like, this is so 1999. 
the point is, though, this is some of that timeless wisdom that has continued and carried on throughout the years. The list is what matters. You know, we kind of got sidetracked with social media and these things. And I'm not saying that social media isn't effective and it's not important. As a matter of fact, it is. It's something I believe uh, very, very strongly about uh, in a positive way. But when it comes to building a list, your best bet is to build your own list, to have traffic that you own, i.e. collecting email addresses, okay? How do you do this? Well, obviously you have to have a way to capture email addresses. This is internet marketing 101. Your offer, you ask for the email, you get the email, you store the email, you communicate with the email, you segment the email addresses into people that are buyers and people that are lookers, right? People that are interested in your offer, people that meet a certain psychographic, demographic, geographic area. You begin to build your list and to segment it and then test it. Here's an offer here. How does this list respond to this offer? Here's an offer here. How can I nurture these people? This is how you build, grow, and nurture a list. And this is important because the traffic that you own is traffic that you can continue to come back to year after year. It's traffic that will always be there. I'm assuming that these email addresses, that this is, these are customers. They represent customers that are your customers, okay? So I'm not just saying go out to, you know, a data clearinghouse or something like that and buy, you know, 100,000 emails. First of all, that's pointless, and that's going to lead to email spam. Okay, there's lots of laws that you, when we're thinking about, you know, collecting email addresses and communicating with email addresses that are in place so that you don't just go out there and buy 100,000 emails and just start spamming them. As a matter of fact, even if I was your customer and you were spamming me, you'd probably turn me off. Like if I was going to be your customer at some point in the future, you would turn me off. You would lose the opportunity to win my business. So don't buy a list build a list. The key here is to build the list, right? If you build the list, this is traffic that you own, traffic that you know you can send an email to, and you're going to get a positive response. And that really is the end game, okay? Email marketing is alive and well if you are communicating with people that, number one, want to be communicated with, and you're communicating things that are valuable and relevant to them. Okay, it's like any other type of content. Email marketing is a channel. Email is a channel that if you're consistent, relevant, and valuable, then guess what? You're going to see good results. In the last few years, we've seen as an industry a decrease in open rates, in click-through rates. Why is this? It's because the content, the email, is not relevant. One thing I love about HubSpot CRM is if somebody hasn't opened your email, I think after 10 or 12 tries, then they take that person off the list because number one, it's going to decrease your chances at delivering that email anyway. I love that they do that because what happens is if you have too many people that are not opening, not responding, not clicking through on your emails, then, then what happens is, you know, you get this score that, you know, perhaps your email is spam. And so the more people that you send an email to and no one opens it, then you're, you're kind of creating this spam potentially spam snowball where, you know, you're just not even going to get to the inboxes anymore. You might, you know, if you're in Gmail, you might get to that promotions box, but eventually you're just going to fall off and, and end up in trash. And I've seen this happen time and time again, because people aren't putting the care into what they're sending to their list. I mean, part of having traffic that you own is that you care for it. It's something that you put thought into, you know, you're not just going to send them everything under the sun. At one point, in email marketing land, you know, we would just send uh, a newsletter and we'd send it to everybody on the list. And I, and very quickly I figured out that you can't just send your newsletter to everyone on the list. Obviously you send it to subscribers, to the people that have actually opted in. But then, you know, for the people that haven't, maybe the, even your customers, maybe they don't want to see the newsletter. And so you kind of figure out like, how are they responding to your emails? But then also is this content in this specific email does it fit their needs? Does it fit their experiences? If it does, then send it to them. But if it doesn't, leave them off the list this week. But outside of email, when we're talking about specifically email, how can we use this list of traffic that we own? Well, a great way to use a list, and when I say list, I mean a 
physical list of email addresses. A great way to use a list is to put that list into uh, Google ads or Facebook uh, ads and create a custom audience. Okay, so you take that list, you throw it into Facebook, you create a custom audience, and now you can target those people through advertising on Facebook. So you're kind of stacking, you know, traffic that you own with traffic that you buy. You're giving this list to Facebook so that they can go out and bring those people into your offer. They might not be fans of your Facebook page at this point, but bring them in so that you can show them this. And this is where really you get into this idea of familiarity, where it's like, okay, how many times can we touch somebody in order that they will become our customer? So maybe it's like, okay, let's show them some ads on Facebook. Number one, you have to have their email. Let's show them some ads on Facebook. They're going to see our ads. They're going to see our post. There's going to be a suggestion that, you know, if they're not aware of us, maybe now they're becoming aware of us. We've got, you know, we've got their email targeting in Google ads. If they do a search in Google and it's relevant to one of our topic areas, our focus areas, then we're going to show that person an ad, an ad because they're on our list. And then it comes to, okay, well, now they've clicked on the ad, they come to the site, and now it's remarketing, retargeting of this person. And then at some point, it's like, okay, if you have a sales team, this person has, you know, seen these ads, they've, They've been on our site, they've been reading, you know, they've read this blog and this blog and this blog. Maybe this is somebody that you as a salesperson, a representative of the company, should reach out to this person on LinkedIn. And I'm not by any means suggesting, you know, just friend them and say, hey, do business with me. But, you know, reach out and then begin to build that relationship, depending on what type of business you're in. Build that relationship with that person, knowing that they're already aware of you, right? This is a beauty of a list that you own. This is just, you know, we're just scratching the surface. We're just getting the tip of the iceberg on what it is that you're able to do with traffic that you own. The idea here is, though, is to build the list and then nurture it. Make sure that they become aware of you, knowing that there's multiple touch points. You know, if, if somebody's not aware of you, it takes, on average, 70 plus times, 70 plus touches for them to become aware of you. If they're not aware of their problem yet, then that's a whole other, you know, ballpark. So three types of traffic. Number one, traffic that you buy. Number two, traffic you control. And number three, traffic that you own. Of course, traffic that you own is what we're all going for. It's building the list and nurturing it and continuing to provide value to those people. So much so that every time you email that list, every time you show an ad to somebody on that list, they're going to respond in a positive way to drive the results that you are looking to drive as a marketing director. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this show, let me know in the comments. If you're listening or watching on a podcast network, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. I appreciate you for spending this time with me today, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe and hit that bell. You'll be the first to be notified when new content goes live. After that, you can watch more videos from Slam Agency. We've picked something we think you'll love.